first thing is to get the leadership buy-in in the first place because without that nothing really works and a lot of that's around um, getting the leaders to have the kind of identifying what's in it for them the incentives to them and why they should do it what are the examples um, of other people who've fostered this knowledge sharing culture and then figuring out how to deal with some of the risks that they're likely to face and anticipate that so that they feel comfortable doing this. I think another thing is building an alliance from the bottom up to really influence and try and manage upwards in the leadership. The second component is the knowledge sharing culture and this is when the leader really steps in to then communicate and reward knowledge sharing behavior so that it's publicly visible that you know the, the leader cares about this so people are aligned in terms of their incentives to do that. And then the last part was what kind of external support organizations like the bank or the UN can, can provide and that's often helping people find these kind of examples and helping kind of uh, show what the benefits of knowledge sharing culture is. We think it's very important to read properly the organization in order to create a good strategy and create good tools and appropriate channels to uh, get the knowledge sharing going within an organization. Basically we were saying that everyone shares the same challenges in our countries, in Latin America and even in Africa. When government comes, they change everything, they start from scratch. They do not learn from the experiences and from the knowledge that they have before. So we were wondering what will be the characteristic of a good knowledge sharing governance structure in order for, the, for avoiding this start over again that we are facing every time that a new party and new government arise to power in our countries. But we the problem in uh, our institution or in our country is uh, uh, particularly the, the the middle or uh, low income countries that th they are not accepting to pay for non tangible uh, assets they are they are ready to pay for roads for infrastructure but not paying for ide idea for knowledge uh, management so there needs to be political will uh, uh, that usually based on awareness uh, and at the end of the day there is a need for uh, legislation on knowledge sharing uh, some awareness raising and capacity building, especially among uh, different stakeholders to agree on the importance of knowledge sharing. Uh, also there needs to be mechanism, so then some of the contribution beyond the fiscal could actually be properly channeled. And on the, for that there is a need for platform for uh, dialogue and collaboration among different uh, stakeholders. And First, we need to have clear understanding of what the benefits are for knowledge sharing. And I think Claude from Microsoft this morning made it a very clear point about uh, the value uh, that knowledge sharing has primarily in the private sector where he comes from. But uh, there are many lessons uh, from there that the public sector could also benefit from. Uh, First of all, I have to speak out about the fact that you have a problem. The case study that we are using, until he spoke out and reached out to people, he didn't know that those who had the solution were within his country, uh, within his country. So you have to speak out before people who may have solutions can come in to you, can come in. This is an important issue. There are other, other constraints include gaps, uh, important capacity gaps how to create knowledge product that to take it from local to global to another local context. And this is really a main challenge because you need to make it first relevant. You have the challenge of uh, language and you have the challenge of success implementation. And this is really now we are discussing how we can make this knowledge product really available to all type of uh, audience, whether locally, internationally or internally. I believe that uh, our farmers on the field, we, ha we make more wealth through knowledge sharing because knowledge will be shared among farmers, among stakeholders, and at the end of the day, it will, be, it will translate to wealth in the pocket of the farmers. What can be done? We, we know that you need to make an M&E system an integral part of management system. We have to define expected outcome, output, and impact so that you can measure against them. We know you need to define benchmark for measurement. 
Uh, we also need to define key indicators should be simple and not too many because when they become too many, they become unwieldy and then um, you model them up and you not achieve results. The traditional monitoring and evaluation practices uh, and the wisdom of communities for whom we are implementing the programs I think has to be respected and traditional monitoring evaluation practices uh, need to be also adopted and adapted to uh, in tune with the new technologies that are available, uh, currently available. That is number one. Secondly, we had also discussed about the theory of change and what impact our interventions uh, would like to see. And thirdly and most importantly, um, how do communities, uh, you know, uh, have their own mechanisms of monitoring and evaluation of the, any program and uh, convert it into a learning. So monitoring, evaluation and learning happening concurrently at various levels, I think uh, improves the effectiveness and efficiency of any program or any social development delivery outcome.